Hey guys, welcome to the first ever release jam for 2023. If you are catching this live, big thanks to you. And one thing I would like to share is that I got a new mic. If you can see this, I have a brand new mic. And even if you can't see it, you should be able to hear the mic. It's, it's a really awesome mic. Hashtag new year, new mic. So we have a lot of exciting things for you and you should expect more cool stuff from Team AppSmith. Now, getting down to the business of today's release jam, we have a lot of features that were shipped that I'm so excited to share with you. The first being that custom branding is live. So means you can ditch the old orange color that everyone apps me right now and customize apps me to meet your brand team or if you just want something looking a little nicer um, you can do that right now with this new feature we've also shipped a feature that makes it possible for widgets to have um, auto height growth so it means that your widgets would behave exactly the way you expect them to and the fetch api has been enabled on the editor so it means you can write fetch on the fly we have a lot more features of course to share with you so we'll be taking a look at them in today's episode of release jam my name is confident and i'm a developer advocate at appsmeet without any delay let's get started All right, so let's start with the elephant in the room. That's custom branding. With this feature, you can completely team or customize the experience of AppSmith. It is not available on the cloud version of AppSmith. Right now, I'm on AppSmith Cloud, as you can see. So it means you have to have a self-hosted version of AppSmith and the business edition of the self-hosted version, if that makes sense. So if you're running the community edition, you will need to upgrade. And let me just show you what you can do with this new feature. So I have a self-hosted instance, which is running the business edition. And if I go to the admin settings page, I now have a new option for branding. And if you take a look at this, this is really cool because you can customize all of the various aspects of AppSmith from the login screen uh, to the email that is sent when you invite people into your instance to the home screen of your instance to the app preview page to your application headers that's the fav icon and the app name and even the 404 page you can customize all of these to your taste so since you're on youtube let's try to customize this for youtube so the first thing i'm going to do is let's change the color of our app to the youtube color and you can see automatically the secondary color and the font color was automatically generated from the primary color you can see a preview of the youtube red color for all of the various aspects of AppSmith. but that's not all let's go on to change the fav icon so i am going to go to my youtube folder and select the fav icon all right and as you can see immediately the fav icon has been updated if you can see this little fav icon right here so let's do tweak things a little bit i'm going to also update the uh, logo and we can see that that has been updated across the app so this looks good i'm going to save it and the moment i return to my dashboard the application dashboard you realize that it no longer says AppSmith, now it says YouTube. And whenever I go to a deployed app, so I'm just going to launch this deployed app, you can see it says YouTube right here. If you take a look at the application fav icon, this is showing the YouTube fav icon and the application has been completely themed to match my YouTube team. So this is just a lovely feature. I, I really love this feature. And in fact, you can take things a bit further. So you can go host this on a custom domain. Uh, you can go edit the app, for example, and change the application URL. You can totally customize this and nobody is going to be able to tell that this application was built on AppSmith. Of course, you could hide the watermark. There's a settings right there in the admin settings page to turn this off. So you could hide that and totally customize the experience of AppSmith. So with this feature, if you have been holding back on upgrading to the business edition, I'm sure this feature is going to convince you to upgrade. So go ahead to do the upgrade. It's totally worth it. All right, so moving on to the next feature I have to show you, that is the widget auto height property. And this property um, ensures that the height of a widget is fluid so that all of its content can be visible. It's a very important property and I'm going to show you what I mean right now. So let's say you have a text widget like this one, which has uh, small text right now, but 
previously without this feature if you had a lot of text in this text widget they'll get to a point where the text is going to be cut off and the contents of the text widget is not going to be visible but with the widget auto height feature which is enabled by default for all widgets you can see see it right now this is the widget auto height feature it's enabled by default for all widgets it is going to ensure that all of your content in whatever widget you're using is always visible of course you can go turn this off to fixed if you want it to be fixed or to auto height with limit if you want to have a break point for the min max height of a widget but i'm just going to leave this as auto right now and let's go paste in some really really long text into this text widget so you notice what happened right now the text widgets grew in size and moved the container widget down below the page so that everything we have in the text widget is visible so this is the um, awesome property which is the widget auto height property and it's not only limited to growing uh, text widgets for example if i'm in the developer mode that's in the editor right now and i need to bring a table widget for example so let's look for a table widget into the container widget so let's bring this into the container widget. Uh, things are moving. The moment I drop this into the container widget, you can notice that the height of the container widget also grows to accommodate its table widget, which is its child right now. So this is a really awesome feature, which is going to make your development experience a lot better. And one other thing this feature enables you to do is um, remove space taken up by hidden widgets. So if I go to the view mode, you can see that we have three form widgets. So we have form one, we have form two, and we also have form three. Now, if I hide form two by turning off the switch, you notice that form three immediately goes up and the space taken up by form two has been occupied by form three. So this is going to make it possible for you to build cleaner widget layouts that do not take up spaces whenever it's not visible. So this is definitely a really good feature that would one, make for a better developer experience whenever you're building right here in the editor. And two, would also make sure that whatever content you have on your application, it's going to be visible irrespective of the device your end users are using to consume your application. So this is a nice one too. Now, moving on to the third feature I'm going to be sharing with you today, we now have Fetch API enabled. Now, this is the one I have been waiting for for a long time and for good reasons. With the Fetch API being enabled, it means that you do not have to create an API resource every time you want to um, write an API query. It also means that you can create API calls on the fly. You can programmatically write fetch APIs and they will be executed on the fly. And I think the best part is that with this new feature, you can download files in memory, which was not possible in AppSmith previously. So let's take a look at this feature. I have a bunch of JavaScript files here. So let's take a look at the request files. Um, if you take a look at this code, I am creating a request on the fly. I did not have to create an API request. That's click on the JS query pane, click on a new blank API, then fill the form to create an API. I did not have to do that. I just had to declare the request using fetch and I can go ahead to run this to show you that it actually works. So I'm fetching an API that returns a bunch of products and you can see the response right here. And of course, this also works with an array of requests, which is what I was talking about earlier. You can programmatically create requests. So I have a bunch of URLs. These URLs can be coming from a database or another API, then I can go ahead to execute all of these requests and return the results here using the promise. So this works, it's, it's a really lovely feature. And the one I would really like to show you is what we had on the screen. So previously it was impossible to download an object or um, a file in memory and send it somewhere else. So for example, if you had a bunch of links that are in a remote location, like a URL, you would have to have downloaded that file before you could reuse it in AppSync. For example, if you had if you have a URL and you want to add that file from the URL as an attachment to an email on AppSmith, what you had to previously do was take that URL, 
create a process to download it by the user clicking on a download button there. You had to have a physical download button. Then the user would have to use the file picker widget to reselect that downloaded file before it can be added as an attachment to an email. Uh, with the new Fetch API being enabled, this is no longer required. So I'm going to go to the view mode and let's take a look at what we have right here. So if I have a URL, I can actually paste this in right here and send it off as a, an attachment to an email. So for example, I'm just going to grab a random image, a uh, cat image. Okay, so this looks good. I am going to copy this image URL and let's head back here and paste it into the uh, request. Okay, so, so I'm going to submit that form and we should have the email sent. We have the email sent. So if I go check my email address, so this is going to be mail.google.com. You notice right here that we have that email received and I have the cat photo appended as a file. Remember that we did not have to go through the process of downloading anything. This was just sent up using the URL and this has been appended as a file here. So it's a really awesome feature. And of course, uh, this works the other way around you could also create a file from within AppSmith and using the Fetch API, you could also have that appended as um, a resource to a different request, for example, an email. So I have my camera enabled right here. I am going to uh, set this to, um, okay, we have the right camera, yes. All right, I think this is right. We have the right camera. So I'm going to take a photo and the moment I click on the submit button, we should have the photo sent to my mailbox and I'm just going to um, reload this. And you can see that we have received the email. So let's check this out. You can see that we have that photo I took from within AppSmith attached as a file and not a URL in the email. So this is a really lovely feature. Um, enabling the Fetch API is just going to make for a better development experience. And of course, you can do fancy stuff like downloading files in memory and sending them elsewhere using the Fetch API. So this is a feature I know I'll be using for sure. And I'm so happy it's been enabled right now on AppSmith. All right, so moving on, the next feature we have on the list is the cleaner app settings menu. The application settings menu has been redesigned to make it cleaner and even more intuitive so that you can find whatever you want when it comes to configuring an application. So once you have an empty canvas, or if you click on an empty canvas space like I have right here, you would see that in addition to the um, canvas settings, you also have the app settings. So I'm just going to go ahead to click on this. And right here, you can see that a dependency tree is being built up. So for example, if I want to configure um, options on the Fetch API page, once I have this clicked, you can see every option we have here is related to the Fetch API page. So this makes it really easy to clean things up and it means all of the options are in the places you would expect them to be. So this is a really nice feature and it's going to make it easy for you to manage your application. All right, so moving on to the next one, each widget now has a property pane search bar. If you don't know what this means, I'm going to quickly show you. So I have a table widget right here. Um, something you notice is that a table widget now has a search bar, which is going to make it easy for me to find what settings I want to configure in the widget. The reason why this is very important is that for complex widgets like the table widget, for example, this widget has a lot of options. This is going to make it so much easier to find the exact settings you want to tweak. So for example, if I was going to work on the pagination property of this widget, I just have to come here and search for pagination, for example. And you can see that we have that option showing up. So this is a really neat feature. And like I said, it's available for all of the other widgets that are on AppSmith. We have it available for all of these other widgets. So it's going to make it easy for you to build and find whatever settings you want to tweak on a widget. It's a really nice feature. Still on the topic of widgets, we now have two new events for form input widgets. That is the unfocus and onblur event. And it's going to be available for all form inputs. The button widget, the input widget, the select widget. This is a feature that has been long awaited and I'm so excited that it's here right now. So for this simple demo app I have right here on the screen, if we take a look at the input widget, you notice that 
I have the on text change, the on focus, and on blur event set up in such a way that they perform a check to validate the password supplied by the user right here. So I can go ahead to test this. And of course, because I have both on focus and on blur set up, it means that whenever the user stops typing, and leaves the input widget, my check still runs. And whenever the user goes to start typing, my check also still runs. So let's uh, let's try to supply a valid password. So I'm going to say A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And here we have a new requirement. Password must include one non-alphabetical character. So let's say one, two, three. And my password is secure. I can go ahead to submit this now. So this is a very useful widget. And I'm sure that as a developer, you're going to make use of uh, these two events rather to customize the experience of your form input widgets. So I'm glad they are here. Go ahead to go make use of them. So for the last feature we're going to be taking a look at today, the embed settings feature now has a UI page. If you can remember a while ago, we did a video on this and uh, the embed settings basically allows you to control what origins can embed your app Smith applications. Previously, the way you configure this settings is by um, entering in text to the Docker EMV file. And while that worked, we thought we could do better. So now a UI page has been created for the embed settings feature and you can go tweak this in your own self-hosted instances. So I'm just going to head back to my self-hosted instance right here. So let's go to the uh, dashboard. And if I go to the admin settings under the general tab, you notice right here we have UI elements for the embed settings edit. So I can go set a limit to which origins I want my embeds to be. I can go enter those um, origins right here within input, or I can disable embedding completely if I want to do it. And the best part about putting it in the UI is that whenever you make changes to the settings right here from within the UI, you can securely and safely restart your instance from the UI. So you don't have to go into the command line to do a Docker Compose down and Docker Compose up anymore. You can do all of that from the UI, which I think is a really neat add-on. So these are the new embed settings UI page, and this sums up all of the features I had to share with you today. And as always, we actually had more features to share than we had the time to share it. So what I'm going to do is leave a link in the description below so that you can go check our release notes. For example, the chat widget now fully supports teaming, the menu widget now supports dynamic items, and right now you can use your own Kubernetes ingress instead of the default Nginx server that ships with AppSmith if you plan to run AppSmith on Kubernetes. So go check the description below for a link to the release notes and get subscribed while you're that's it. All right, so I see you next time. Kudasir miwa amigo. Bye-bye.